Can you show a non-zero diamond condition? Can I show a non-zero Newman boundary condition? Sure. Then, if I have a non-zero Newman boundary condition, so okay, so let me summarize summarize this uh, zero Newman boundary condition first. Zero Newman boundary condition is basically not enforce anything. Right? It's naturally satisfied. Now, if I want a non-zero Newman boundary condition, I cannot expect to do the same thing. Right? What if I have a non-zero Newman boundary condition? Okay, so let's go back to where we derive this naturally satisfied Newman boundary condition. We say that it is naturally satisfied because du dx at x equal to zero is exactly equal to zero, right? But what if my du dx is, for example, equal to one? What do I do? This term is not going to become zero. Instead, what I have is g times one at x equal to zero appears in here. So the rest of the terms are the same. And uh, this term is the same, right? All right. So the additional term I get is g at x equal to zero. Now I have a change in my weak form. Uh, take note, this is the first time we actually see that the boundary condition changes the weak form, changes the equation itself, right? All the other places, the boundary condition only changes the space in which we test or we find the solution. This A of UG plus L of G equal to zero never changed. But here, it actually did change. A of UG plus LG is equal to zero. We cannot stick to the same A and L. So, can somebody tell me, does A change or L change? Or both? The L has changed, exactly, because A is the term that depends both on G and U, and L is the thing that uh, only depends on G and does not depend on U, right? So my L is now different. L of G is G at X equal to zero, this additional term, plus this. Right, so this is my, this is my new L. Yes? What happened to the G times G at X equal to one? Oh, at X equal to one, we are, because we are satisfying a Dirichlet boundary condition, we, are restricting our space of solution to all the solutions that satisfy the Dirichlet boundary condition, right? So u is automatically zero at x equal to one. Then, because u is zero at x equal to one, we only need to test this equation to perturbations in u. So g, which corresponds to perturbations in u, also satisfies the zero boundary condition at x equal to one. So at x equal to 1, this term vanishes because g is 0. At x equal to 0, the term becomes either vanishes if you have zero Newman boundary condition or becomes one term in the linear functional. Okay, so for the non-zero, you can just add it as well to L. If what is non-zero? So g at x equal to 1 would never be equal to non-zero. G, because g is a perturbation, right? So g is a perturbation in the possible space of x, uh, of u. So, so if u satisfies any even non-zero Dirichlet boundary condition, that means the possible perturbations you can make on the solution still has to satisfy a zero Dirichlet boundary condition. So g the test function also always lives in a linear space, which means if it satisfies a certain boundary condition, the boundary condition is going to be a zero boundary condition. All right. Okay. So so uh, so uh, changing the right hand side. 
so let's add it to our finite I mean there is there is not much you need to do to discretize this it's already discretized right so um, the only thing we need to do is uh, basically evaluate uh, L differently so remember our our right hand side the B is equal to L of h1 l of h0 l of h1 etc so for different if we substitute g into one of these basis functions which term actually change in the right hand side only the first one changes right because only the first basis function uh, only the first basis function which starts from 1 and goes to 0 has a non zero value at x equal to 0 so this is my g uh, this is sorry this is my h0 this is the only one that has a non zero value all the other ones are like that so this is h1 and uh, etc i mean they all have zero values so this is the only one that is not equal to 0 at x equal to zero so only the first term in the b changes and uh, uh, the value added is equal to one right for g equal to h zero okay so that's a non-zero newman boundary condition so uh, for example if that is that is the case uh, let me actually just modify on top of that my b in this case okay so my a in this case is this a because didn't change uh, no matter if you have a zero or non-zero newman boundary condition is the same my b is this and uh, let's still stick to the same uh, boundary condition on the right it's a non-zero newman boundary condition on the right so i need to add it and then as opposed to the zero Newman boundary condition, we actually need to do something on the left. B1 is equal to B1 plus 1. Okay. And then let's solve it. Uh, U1 to N minus 1 is equal to A backslash minus B. Let's plot it. Uh, you solve the minus one because I think B all already includes the negative sign in it. So, uh, I think I might. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, yeah. So when I factorize this term, the meaning of this term at zero one means the value of this at one subtracted. Uh, uh value of yeah subtracted uh, minus the value of this at zero. So so the value at zero actually has to be negative, right? So. So this is uh, uh, this is my mistake. Uh, du dx if du dx is equal to one, this is negative. So uh, yeah, uh, this is negative. Anything else I need to change? So so I need to put a negative one here. So here I made a mistake. Uh, the derivative here is becomes negative one. So if I want uh, uh, I want to enforce a positive boundary condition, I actually have to minus one. So this I already my a plus one. So I let me do minus two to make up for the mistake. So this and uh, this. Yeah, okay. So now I'm correctly enforcing let's do access equal uh, to see that uh, read to see that I'm actually enforcing a slope of one at the left boundary. All right. All of these are done with uh, uh, with this kind of grids. <laughs> if, you, if you don't remember from the smooth looking line you have been looking at. All right. So this is uh, uh, this is the different boundary conditions you can play with in finite element. Oh yeah, let me actually talk uh, about one more type of boundary conditions.